Hey guys, uh, Mr. Bouchard here, and we're here to talk about simple machines today. Um, so I want to start out first by showing you very complex machines. Um, and if you ever watch the show How It's Made, or which is on Science Channel, um, there actually is a link right here to one of them. Um, you can see how something is made, right? And you'll see all these machines uh, that make work easier, right? That's the whole point. We basically want to put less effort in and spend less time making something. Uh, and then more product can be pushed out and obviously more money can be made by the company. All right, and that's the whole point of a simple machine or a complex machine in the case of these ones. Okay, so what is a machine in general? A machine is a device that allows you to do work more easily. Allows you to exert more force with less effort. So an example, if we have to carry some dirt, okay, deadlifting like the guy on the right, okay, dirt will be very heavy, carrying bucket after bucket after bucket. Um, this guy here has a wheelbarrow. So a wheelbarrow is an example of a couple of simple machines together um, that basically are able to move dirt in an easy way. All right? So having a wheel, rolling that dirt, rather than carrying it straight against gravity, um, allows you to put less effort in and still get the same amount of work done. All right, so how does a machine help you to do work? It changes the amount of effort you exert. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, it changes the distance over which you exert the force. So seen with this uh, lever here, all right, which you could put under a rock or a boulder like this, Fulcrum is like a changing um, point where it changes direction. Um, so you need that to get the extra leverage on the, uh, the rock. All right, but the whole point of the lever is basically to apply a force to the rock. Okay, the only difference, it's able to do it over a longer distance. Instead of just pushing in one direction, it's able to pull upward and push forward at the same time, which um, allows you to um, get more effort involved. Um, so it changes the direction you exert the force and again that's why you can lift a heavy object using something like a lever. All right, You get that extra uh, effort, uh, output force out of the lever uh, that you can't do normally. Alright so different forces involved. Um, so obviously I mentioned the word uh, output force, but input force the first one, that's what you put into the machine. Um, so the force you exert on the machine, the effort put in. So in the case of that hand cart or hand truck, um, you're pushing it and that's your input force. Okay, the output force be the force the machine exerts on the object. So in the case of these boxes of paper, which are incredibly heavy, um, it will actually be able to overcome gravity and be able to move them. Okay, if you tried to lift those alone, um, they would probably be too heavy to carry or pretty close to too heavy, being too heavy to carry. Okay, now to tell if a machine is effective, we have something called mechanical advantage. Um, this is how much machine increases your ability to do work. So basically, output force divided by input force is mechanical advantage and what we want is the output force to be greater than the input force all right by far all right and that would that's what makes an effective machine um, if they're equal then your machine may not be working so great and then the reverse if you're not getting output uh, obviously the machines not functioning at all all right so therefore uh, we definitely want output force to be greater than input force. Okay, the simple machines. Some of these you'll recognize from just your regular lives. So incline plane is the first one. This is a flat surface with one end higher than the other. And so an example, like in the previous slide, the moving truck ramp itself or a wheelchair ramp, you're overcoming gravity by rolling an object up the ramp. Right, so it allows you to uh, push forward rather than just straight up lift, um, which you're able to put more effort in that way. Okay, next we have a wedge. 
A wedge is a double-sided incline plane, so there's two incline planes to put together. Um, effort is applied by driving the wedge into something. So these are objects that do cutting, chipping, um, basically pushing things out of the way. Um, so an axe, a knife, a nail, a chisel, all right, they all act in the same way. They try to drive into something and push uh, the material aside. And that's an example of a wedge. Okay, next we have a lever, which we saw already with the boulder. So it's a rigid stiff bar that turns around a point called a fulcrum. So the fulcrum is where it changes direction. Uh, so we push downward on the lever and then it pushes the object upward. So examples of that, scissors are a lever. Uh, crowbars, as you see with this, in the claw of the hammer also. Uh, seesaw, right? So one side goes up, the other side goes down. Okay, that's an example of a lever. All right, next, screws. Screws tend to be uh, a pretty useful to, uh, simple machine because it's an incline plane wrapped around a wedge or a cylinder, and as a result, you get this spiraling sort of uh, pattern. All right, and the good thing about it, the only way to back out a screw is turn it the other way. Okay, so instead of like nails, nails tend to pop out a lot. Um, I don't know if you ever see nails popping in your walls. All right, they have to actually get repaired and then whatnot. Um, more builders now are using screws for most things uh, because they're harder to back out. Okay, so you can see uh, they hold much, uh, definitely much more strength. Um, car jacks also, some of them that are rotating ones will actually work this way. Uh, bolts, so using machinery a lot. Okay, these are all examples of screws. Okay, wheels and axles, all right, used a lot in our lives. Okay, so a large wheel with a small wheel or an axle in the middle. Um, so when a wheel and axle is attached, so they turn together, basically. Okay, so like a steering wheel is attached to the shaft, which then turns the car wheels. Uh, so basically, uh, steering wheel, doorknobs, bicycle handlebars, because you're rotating that whole handlebar system. Uh, a screwdriver also, you're turning that cylinder, which then turns um, basically the end of the screwdriver. Okay, doorknobs also work in the same way. Okay, pulleys also consists of a rope or one or more wheels. Okay, and what they're allowing you to do is to lift heavier objects, reducing friction, also not fighting gravity as readily. <clears throat> okay, so the weight is attached to one end of the rope or one of the wheels, and you end up pulling it upward, okay, by pulling down. Okay, more wheels equals less work. So an example of this one here with this worker, you see there's multiple pulleys on the system. Uh, the more you put, the more mechanical advantage you get out of uh, the pulley. So in that example, you can actually lift very heavy objects. And that's the way they actually lift car, they have car hoists actually work on that way, the car engines. Um, so that's an example of a pulley system. Okay, now what do uh, all simple machines try to do? Um, most of them are going to try to allow you to exert force over a longer distance, all right? So incline plane, wedge, screws, all work on that same premise. Okay, lever uh, also changes direction and the amount of force exerted. Okay, wheel and axle increases the amount of force by exerting more force over a longer distance. And pulleys change direction and the amount of force exerted. Okay, so again, um, they're all pretty much the similar um, goal in the end, um, trying to make work easier uh, in some way. Okay, parts of the bike. So we have the chain, we have the handlebars, the sprocket wheel, the pedal, and the handbrake. So what are these in terms of simple machines? Okay, so moving ahead. All right, so the chain acts as a pulley. All right, you can see the wheel and the uh, pulley system. Handlebars are a wheel and axle, as I mentioned. So here's your axle, here's your wheel that rotates. 
Uh, sprocket wheel, that's this guy here. Okay, that's a wheel and axle also. A pedal is a lever. And also the handbrakes are a lever also. Okay, so many simple machines and things like a bike, right? So as an example. Okay, so here's just a general thing for all of them also. Okay, so an incline plane, again a ramp. A uh, wedge could be an axe. A screw could be obviously just a regular wood screw. A uh, pulley, all right, again, could be a hoist system on the end of a crane. A uh, wheel and axle, all right, so obviously there's different examples of that, um, you know. And then levers, all right, could be something like a uh, system like that.